Hi, the video you're about to watch was made six months ago, about a week after I bought the Nikon Z6 camera. A big move has interrupted completion of the video. I'm still trying to organize my workspace, but still, maybe there's something useful to be found in these early tests with Nikon's contribution to the mirrorless camera world. All of the clips were recorded in camera for both cameras and have no color grading or any post-production work. So let's get to it. Hi, Ray here. Today I wanted to do a hasty video comparing the Nikon Z6, or Z6 if you prefer, to the Fujifilm X-Pro2 4K. I'd set up earlier in my backyard until this. I've nestled myself amongst the rocks here hoping to hide from the wind, which is another issue that was blowing over my reflectors uh, in the backyard and so on. And hopefully the Rode Video Mic Pro that I'm using here with the uh, so-called dead kitten on it will uh, at least uh, cut down on some of the wind noise. I made a little video several weeks ago asking if the Fujifilm X-Pro2 was a viable vlogging camera. Uh, that still remains to be seen, although I did uh, come to the conclusion that you know it wasn't that great. So far with my tests, the Nikon Z6 has been just amazing in terms of uh, following focus, face, face following focus. I've got them both set on uh, fake, fake, <laughs> fake face, face tracking. So, <laughs> so we'll see how that works. And so without further ado, let's do the comparison. Oh, and I might also throw in a little comparison 4K footage from my iPhone 10. S. So I'll put the settings down here, um, but one thing that I should mention is that I don't have the equivalent lenses for the uh, Nikon and the Fuji. So on the Fujifilm X-Pro2 I have the 40 to 150 2.8 and on the Nikon I have the 50 1.8 and I don't know what it is on the iPhone. So that's where we're starting out from. Okay, here we are, back at the ranch. Things have finally quietened down here in suburbia enough for me to set up my little studio on the deck. The wind is still an issue though, and hopefully my jury rigged uh, spar on the reflector will hold up. <laughs> okay, birds. <laughs> a while back I tested the Fujifilm X-Pro2 at night, and I'll, uh, maybe I'll put a link to that at the end, but you can find it in my, in my videos. It's a test of the X-Pro2 4K and includes some night footage. So you can check that out if you wish. So now we're getting to test these out in lower light. Incidentally, there's no neutral density filters uh, or any other post-processing to be used in this test. So now we're getting a chance to test this out in lower light with just the setting sun behind me reflected a little bit off this aforementioned reflector. But what I'll do, I think, to end this off is throw in some real low light tests, which I'll do later on this evening. So these clips on both cameras have been recorded in camera for both the Nikon Z6 and the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Only the profiles that I chose for the Nikon, the flat profile, and for the Fujifilm, the Pronex standard film simulation.
Well, that about wraps it up, but for a couple of observations that I'll get to in a moment. But first, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to be notified of upcoming videos. The first thing I wanted to touch on was the face detection, or lack thereof, on the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Now, I've done a little bit of research on the interwebs, and if you can believe YouTube videos, some of the X-Series cameras, at least in 4K, the face detection doesn't work. If you have contrary information, please leave it in the comments below. If I need correction, I'd be happy to be corrected. Now, it seems like it might not be a fair fight putting up a relatively old camera, three years old, like the Fujifilm X-Pro2, against the new kid in the ring, the Nikon Z6. But I thought it might be interesting, if not entirely instructive. I'll do a more complete look at the Nikon Z6. I've only had it for a week today. But one criticism that I will agree with is the relative unusability of the internal preamps for the, for the mic. And so I'm actually redoing this clip with an external recorder, the Tascam DR60D Mark II. But I am looking forward to the promised firmware upgrades for the Nikon Z6, which will include improved low light focusing, although I haven't run into any big issues myself so far. And the big news, the inclusion of ProRes RAW codec, which can be recorded externally, and so maybe I'm going to be buying the Atomos Ninja 5. Since I recorded that in April, there have been two firmware updates so far to the Nikon Z6, 2.0 and 2.1, with the first adding eye detect autofocus for stills, but not for video, and improved low light performance. As far as the ProRes RAW goes, we now know, because Nikon told us, that uh, use of ProRes RAW will require a factory modification. Now I want to make it clear, this is not meant as the last word on either of these cameras and it's certainly not meant to disparage the X-Pro2, which I think held its own pretty well considering its limited uh, video capabilities. Oh, about those iPhone clips. Well, they're kind of oversaturated and over sharpened and not too much good in the dark. But really they're, they're not bad at all. I'm thinking that for YouTube use, they're quite good. And of course, the iPhone 11 has just been announced, uh, supposedly with improved video, including wider dynamic range. That's really interesting. And of course, Fuji has just announced the release of the X-Pro3, also with some improved video capabilities. But the rest of the camera really doesn't fit my needs, so I won't be upgrading. And now, for those of you who stuck around to the bitter end, I've got a little extra here, a time-lapse video made with the Z6's inbuilt time-lapse function. Hope you enjoy it. 